President Biden unveiled his administration's plan to cancel billions of dollars in student loan debt. The plan will cancel loans for borrowers making less than $125,000 a year, including $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients. The federal loan payment pause is also being extended through the end of the year. Mr. Biden says today's action will do more than just take away debt from those who need it most, but will help Americans for years to come. I believe my plan is responsible and fair. It focuses the benefit on middle class and working families. It helps both current and future borrowers and will fix a badly broken system. And these actions are built on my administration's effort to make college more affordable in the first place. The president says the loan cancellations will impact 43 million people nationwide. If you have student loans, you're probably wondering how the president's student loan forgiveness announcement will impact your debt. Well, the first thing that you need to know, this only applies to government loans, meaning federal direct loans and Pell Grants. Any loans that you have from a private organization like a bank, well, they're not going to qualify. With a regular federal loan, $10,000 can be forgiven. If you have Pell Grants, which are awarded to low-income students, you're looking at up to $20,000 in debt forgiveness. So how does all of this work? Let's say you have Pell Grants and you're qualified to receive $20,000 in loan forgiveness. If you owe $15,000 in federal student loans, well, then the government is going to forgive all of that debt in its entirety. You're only eligible if you make less than $125,000 a year, or if you're married, regardless of whether or not you have kids, $250,000 per couple. Well, this plan also includes capping the amount of loan payments that you owe on a monthly basis, and the plan also brings it down from 10% of your salary to 5%. It limits how long you're paying this debt to 20 years. The White House says it also will provide fixes to try and make student loan payments and forgiveness easier to manage, especially for military and public service workers. Let's go ahead right now and bring in Roy Paul. He is the executive director of Sense Ability, spelled C-E-N-T-S, Ability, which is a nonprofit aimed at educating teens about financial literacy and management. Uh, Roy, welcome. It's good to talk to you again. So how much is this plan going to cost the government? We heard President Biden talk about concerns about where this money was going to come from. So as far as we know, how is the government going to pay for this? Yeah, so it's going to cost about 200 to 300 billion dollars depending on who you talk to. Uh, and and I think what the president is really trying to underscore more so than the cost of the program is this notion that he is investing in low income people who have been struggling with debt. Right? There's all this talk about uh, the final total package plan and then inflation uh, impact. And I think what he was trying to hone in on this message is that whatever the impact ends up being, whatever it ends up costing, he's willing to take the hit to invest in people who really need economic relief right now. So, Roy, we heard a couple of questions being thrown at the president about the fairness for people who maybe had to scrape together their funds to pay off those loans. We didn't hear him address that. How much of a financial impact will this plan actually have on people with student loan debts? And is there a feeling, are you hearing from people about, uh, about relative fairness in terms of this new announcement? Yeah, there's no way to really fix the notion that it's unfair because for many people it is. And if you are one of those people listening to the president talk right now about uh, this plan and you've already paid off your loans, you're sitting there going, wait, what happened to my ten or twenty thousand uh, dollars? A lot of people really do make life-altering decisions based on their student debt. They take out a cheaper mortgage for a home. Uh, they may not be able to drive the car that they want to. Their vacations might look a little bit different. So they've sacrificed, and they're not going to get a rebate. And so uh, the president doesn't want to talk about it too much because it is unfair for those who who, uh, who are in that situation. Well, Roy, we're hearing criticism from some Republicans saying this plan will only make inflation worse. I know Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has criticized this plan, calling it a, quote, wildly unfair redistribution of wealth. What's your take on that criticism? 
Yeah, you know, at the, at the heart of whatever this is going to cost, it's going to be really placed on the taxpayers, right? That's who eventually is going to end up paying for it. Uh, and, and that is really what's driving uh, some of the negative responses that you see, uh, because included in a lot of those people who are going to be paying for it are people who never went to college themselves, right? Uh, and so this redistribution argument is, is, is valid in the sense that you're talking about people uh, in this country who are really trying to get up uh, out of this financial crisis by themselves. Uh, and now this is one more thing to add on top of all of it. Uh, and so I think the president, this is really going to be a messaging strategy for the president. How effective is he and his administration going to be and really selling the idea of helping people come out of this financial crisis um, as opposed to anything else. That's really what's going to be the, the driving factor here. It's really how they message it to the American people. Roy, you teach teens about financial literacy, management. Um, a, a lot of times, um, one of the problems is that that is taught, it's handed down from parents who are either aware or not aware. Uh, presumably, some of the, the teens that you work with don't come from a background where they've had a lot of instruction on this. How will this forgiveness affect them? Yeah, you know, for me, I look at two things. Um, one, many people that we teach and across the country don't even know what their monthly student payment loan is going to be when they graduate in four years. They take out the debt and they figure it out when they graduate. Uh, and uh, what we want to do is change habits, right? If you're going to go to school, there's nothing wrong with going to college and taking out loans to do it. But if you're going to take out fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt, maybe there's a least expensive alternative. Can you go to a community college to start, or maybe a state school? And then on the back end, when we talk about all this forgiveness that people are going to get. I really want people to really understand that when you have that ten or twenty thousand dollar forgiveness, hopefully that then is redistributed in your own personal bank account. How are you then going to use that extra money you didn't have to spend to make sure that everything else adds up evenly in your account? And I hope people really do take advantage of that. All right, Roy Paul, thank you so much for joining us.